What's up guys, today was a pretty awesome day in the iPhone and iPod Touch world. If you don't know, Apple's March 17th event was held today on March 17th in Cupertino, and lots of new features were announced in the iPhone 3.0 software. Now this is also coming for the iPod Touch. But a lot of stuff that iPhone users have been wanting forever are finally coming to the device. So first off, let's go ahead and say all the features that they mentioned uh, that's supposed to come along with it. First off is in-app purchase. What this is going to do is let you purchase things inside apps. Like if you're playing some kind of game uh, and they have like a health pack or something like that as an example and you pay like a dollar for it. It all goes through uh, your iTunes store account uh, when you pay for stuff. But this could be a great thing for developers uh, and it will also probably bring a lot more money for Apple. They're adding peer-to-peer -peer networking which will let you play games uh, like over a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, through Bluetooth, wirelessly, obviously. And not just games, other kind of apps that work with peer-to-peer. -peer. So that could be an awesome feature. We may see some great multiplayer online games coming soon. Apple has now added accessory support. Uh, stuff that's made for iPod. You'll see like a little sticker so that says made for iPod. Now they're adding this into the 3.0 software. You're going to be able to use the, the dock um, and wirelessly. Using Bluetooth, of course. Maps had a few new changes. A lot of developers wanted to be able to embed the Google Maps into their applications and now uh, Apple is allowing that so you can embed Google Maps into your applications and uh, it looks like the Maps has made a few new changes like to the images and kind of stuff like that. Apple has created their own voice memo application which you probably already know what that does. It records audio. That's about it. Uh, they've added calendar support for CalDAV or CalDAV. I'm not sure what that is. I'm, I don't even really use the calendar but if you'd like to know, it's C-A-L-D-A-V. You can Google it, find out some more information about it. They did some changes to the Stocks app. Uh, it now comes in Landscape View, so you can rotate it. Um, they've added a new Stories button to the bottom, and you can see details right in the app. There are also uh, notes of YouTube accounts. Why they haven't did updates to the YouTube app, I have no idea. The YouTube app could be so much better by like being able to log into your account, uh, being able to leave comments and stuff like that, it could be so much better. But uh, they did note it wasn't. They really say much about it, but it was just they said YouTube accounts. So we may see some updates in that. Stereo Bluetooth. I'm not sure if this is confirmed or not, uh, but I was reading in Gadget's report and they kind of mentioned it. So maybe that's coming as well. In the question and answer section, uh, someone asked about Flash, and Apple said they have no announcements on that topic today. So sorry for you guys that want Flash. Apple also said they're working on tethering. Someone asked it in the question and answer section of the event, so we'll see about that. Now let's talk about the features everybody's really, really, really been wanting for a while. The first one, the one a lot of people want most, copy and paste. It is finally here. Yes, copy and paste is coming to the iPhone and iPod Touch 3.0 software. Push notifications. Yes, it is coming. Um, and in the question and answer section of the event, um, someone asked if push notifications will they have uptime promises, and they said no. So, but that could be a great feature. A lot of people have been wanting push notifications, and they also say that using push notifications is going to save a lot of battery life. So that's pretty much a really good thing. Landscape email and text messages. A lot of people have wanted this feature. Um, I don't know why they didn't implement that at first, but yeah, now you can compose and read emails and text messages in landscape mode. They added this new thing called Spotlight, uh, which is like a thing on the home screen. They called it another home screen, which is going to let you do search through your whole phone, basically, through contacts, mail, um, iPod, notes, stuff like that. And apparently it's straight from the home screen. Now, I'm not sure exactly how to do this. I wasn't actually at the event. I'm reading reports and stuff like that. But from what I read, I think you like scroll when you're on the main page of your home screen. I think you scroll to the left to get that. I'm not sure about that though, so don't take my word on it. But it will let you search through your whole phone, which actually to Joe Burke and phones I already have, so that's nothing really new. But last and definitely not least, MMS support. Yes, Apple has added multimedia messaging on the iPhone. Obviously, it doesn't include video messaging. But what it's going to let you do is send photos, contacts, audio files, and location through MMS. Why did they not have this at first? But I'm sad to say that iPhone first generation users are not going to get MMS support, as well as A2DP, whatever the crap that is. But the 3G will. 
I'm really mad at Apple about this because I paid more for my device. They paid less, and I get less than them. That's not fair, but Apple, you will not trick me with your ways. I will not upgrade to the iPhone 3G. Come out with a new phone, and we'll talk about it. So that's basically a rundown of all the new features. To my understanding, there's also some other things that they didn't mention that's coming. So this is going to be a big update for iPhone and iPod Touch users. I can't wait to see this. If you are an iPhone developer and you have the SDK, you can actually get the beta 3.0 now. And the regular users are going to need to wait till sometime this summer, and I think it's in June. Now, I do have the SDK. I don't know if you'll get the beta version uh, with the free SDK or not. But even if you don't, if I get a hold of the beta 3.0 software, you guys will be the first to know. Another sad thing is the iPod Touch users are going to have to pay $9.95 for the 3.0 software update. Do you guys know it's really dumb to pay for that when Apple, you can actually download it directly from their website if you need the direct link. So you guys just be patient. You can get that free. I'm not telling you it's the right thing to do, though. So that's basically a rundown of the event, how it went down. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to rate five stars and favorite. It takes like two clicks. Really appreciate it. Make sure you visit tiesiphonehelp.com. We're going to be covering all this kind of stuff, uh, more details about some of these stuff that they announced. And if anything like this happens again, like any events or anything like that, be sure to be following me on Twitter. Like today, I made so many updates of what was going on there in the event. So you may want to follow me on Twitter to receive updates on iPhone and iPod link in the description as well thanks for watching please don't forget to subscribe uh, and thanks for getting me to 20 freaking thousand youtube subscribers that is crazy appreciate it guys couldn't do it without you guys see you next time